taken that we have to take sufficient action to prevent dangerous climate change. This is an obligation that our courts and tribunals have enforced in several instances, including in the Save Ramu case before the National Environmental Tribunal on building a coal-fired power plant in Ramu. The third principle is the obligation to access policy choices according to their impact in protecting the most vulnerable by one, reducing exposure and increasing adaptive capacity of the most vulnerable communities and population groups, avoiding entrenching or exacerbating existing inequalities, for example, by creating disproportionate financial impacts on poor households. These principles speak to the social and economic rights and the right to human dignity of the vulnerable groups of persons within our communities. County governments have an obligation to ensure that these persons access socioeconomic goods like food, water, and healthcare as part of their mitigation and adaptation measures to ensure that these people's rights are not violated as a result of the impact of change, climate change with its manifestations in the form of drought, floods, pandemics, among others. In addition, the effect of climate adaptation and mitigation policies is a crucial issue in any discussion of the response to climate change. We should bear in mind always that the cost of adapting to climate change should not disproportionately fall on the poor and the vulnerable members of our society where the cost of adaptation and mitigation measures is not thought through carefully, they have the undesirable effect of increasing inequality in our society. Lastly, the entire policy development, implementation, and evaluation process related to climate change should involve active participation of stakeholders with an emphasis on the fair participation of vulnerable and marginalized groups. Given our Constitution's strong commitment to the ethos of democratic participation in governance, whenever the national or county governments engage in climate action related to policy development, the citizens, including the vulnerable groups, must be involved. It is only through their input that we can ensure that adaptation and mitigation policies are owned by the very people that it is going to affect. Indeed, it is given that climate change will affect food security, access to water, and health outcomes in our country. This is likely to see the living conditions of the vulnerable segment of our community worsen and exacerbate the already existing inequalities in our society. What this should tell us is that the most vulnerable need to be included in our decision-making efforts. This is an obligation that has been enforced by our High Court in Mohammed Ali Bandi case with respect to the Rapset project and in the Mui coal base in Koroko community case with respect to coal mining project. In conclusion, I want to emphasize that our Constitution imposes a climate action obligation on all state actors, more so the national and the county governments, as evident from the Charter's insistence on sustainable development. In addition, we come to grasp with the threats, dangers, and challenges of climate change and the required climate action. There is need to bear in mind the social justice imperative in the Constitution that requires that our mitigation and adaptation measures and policies protect the vulnerable, the excluded communities, and population groups among both the current and the future generations. I thank you for listening. I thank you for inviting me. Long live devolution. Long live uh, climate justice for all of us. Thank you.